we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, we're going to look at pi notation, capital pi notation, for, for multiplying, for repeating a product. Uh, this, is, this is a nice to have for, uh, for understanding the solution to the Basel problem. Uh, it's, uh, we won't be using it for, for our route to, to the Basel problem. Uh, it was used by Euler in his original solution and it's becomes, it becomes relevant in understanding uh, this, kind of, this kind of series in general, as well as uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Riemann hypothesis, which is, uh, which is really honestly uh, what, uh, what I'm grooming you all for in this whole Basel uh, thing. So, <laughs> so, uh, so nice to have, uh, not necessary, for our path, uh, but uh, it, it ends up saving up saves up a lot of uh, ink and and paper space uh, if you need it. So here we go. So let's we'll let's take a look at this and uh, we'll break it all down. Uh, do not fear it. I, I realize it looks like a bit much. Uh, it's uh, this. This example that I've got here, I'm using that the, the binomial coefficient that we that we looked at in a previous video. Okay, but I'm going to demonstrate this this pi notation kind of from the ground up, starting much simpler. So uh, let's uh, let me uh, let me slide it out of the way here. I could even shrink it. We'll just keep it up in the corner so that we don't. Keep it for reference. Okay, so we'll begin by reviewing sigma notation, which we did a few videos ago. Uh, and there's our index. Uh, I equals one to say five. Do this for a short example. And there's our general term is going to be that I. Uh, I and that, what would that equal? That would equal, and now we increment the i value. So the first time, it's going to be a 1. Uh, the second time, it's going to be a 2. And this is a, if you've done computer programming, you might recognize we, we, basically is we've got a loop. Uh, for i equals 1 to 5, do this. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Uh, there you go. Bob's your uncle. That's, that's a fairly simple one. Um, we could go uh, i equals one to uh, infinity, okay, and uh, then we would have, uh, then we could say, okay, y, okay, one over um, i squared, and that would equal one over i times, uh, i squared is going to be well, one squared, and then plus, at one over two squared plus one over three squared plus odd on and on up to um, to infinity. So here we've got it. We've got a we've got an infinite sum. Okay. So that's uh, that's a uh, quick review of uh, of sigma notation. And I hope you recognize that this is the solution that we're actually or not solution, this is a question that we are looking for a solution for. Uh, we know the solution, but how do we get that? All right, so now, now on to what does pi do? Well, pi, pi notation, whereas the sigma, capital S in Greek, uh, is for sum, okay? The pi notation is for products. And we can have infinite products or uh, just our products just from 1 to k, where k is finite. We'll look at some examples of that. So let's, let's write out a simple one here, straightforward. There is a capital pi. I'll try to make it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, i equals 1 to 10. Okay, so of i. There we go, i. There's our general term. Okay, so how is that going to boil down? We're going to have, first we're going to have 1, 
and then we're going to multiply that by increment the i to 2, and we'll multiply that increment the i to 3, and multiply that, and so on and so on and so on, up to times 9 times 10. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. It takes a little bit of getting used to it, I guess. Uh, but you can, and, and in this case, I mean, why would we do this rather than just say yeah, 10 factorial, okay? So if we want to generalize that, we've got uh, i equals 1 to, uh, to k, say, uh, that would equal k factorial. Now this, this business down here, uh, it's not really, we're not really saving anything, <laughs> okay? By, I mean, in fact, writing k factorial like this is a lot more straightforward than, than this whole business. Okay? But for more, for more complex or more complicated products, uh, this is really, this is a lifesaver. Uh, so let's, let's look at some examples. Now, you recall from our discussion of the binomial coefficient, uh, well, let's, let's do an example. Let's say, let's say you've got 52 cards, okay? And you're gonna deal yourself four cards and you want all four aces. Now, it doesn't matter whether you have clubs, spades, diamonds, which one you draw first. The idea is at the end of drawing four cards, you're gonna get four aces, okay? You want four aces. Now, what, how many, what are the odds of that? Well, how many different ways can you deal four cards? out of 52, uh, turns out a lot. Uh, but I mean, really the, 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 the simplest way of doing this, and this is a review of the binomial coefficient, uh, is I mean, you got 52 possibilities for the first card. And 52, 51 possibilities for the second card, 50 possibilities for the third card and 49 possibilities for the fourth card. And now if we multiply all of these, this is gonna give us the number of different ways to draw four aces where, uh, where order matters. So it's this, this is gonna make a distinction between drawing the ace of spades first, uh, drawing the ace of clubs first, whatever order you end up with those four aces. So we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. But there's a nice, way of describing this. And previously what we did is, is, is we, we wrote it down as 52 factorial, okay? And then we divided that by 52 minus four factorial, which basically says, I only want the first, uh, the first four descending descending numbers in this factorial. That, that's what all this says. Now again, th this is a bit of a clumsy way, not clumsy, but takes up a lot of real estate. So we can write this actually as 52, with a little four up here. Now it looks like 52 to the power of four. We just underline the four, okay? So what that means is 52 factorial, but only the first four terms of the descending factorial going down that way. I mean, isn't that a lot nicer than this? I mean, this is good because it spells it out and it helps us then manipulate this and discover patterns. But then once we've got those patterns, shorthand is really nice. Okay, so th this is what we've got here. And then if we want to find this whole solution then, then remember, we've got to divide this by all the combinations that we have of four. So our final thing here is that we wanted, I, this is what 52 choose four equals, okay? Uh, all that, 52 minus four factorial all over four factorial, all right? Um, which now we can, we can actually write all of this here, as I said, and just 52, the little four up here underlined, all over four factorial, right? So we want to generalize that. Remember, 
this was N, this was K, and this was K. So we could write that as um, N, little K up there, and K factorial, okay? And then that, that ends up being a, another general way of writing the N choose K, all of that right there. So let's write that, that notation up here. Uh, N choose K, we can also write that as N, K superscript up there, K factorial. Okay, so now let's, let's focus on this, uh, this 52 times 51 times 50 times 49, these first four terms in this product. We'll write our pi notation down here. We'll start with i equals one to four, because we want four terms. Right? And we're going to do 52. Now, if we stop there, it would be 52 times 52 times 52 times 52. Not something really that we want. Uh, so we need to find some way for each increment for this 52 to drop down. And so what we'll do is we will add this to one minus i. Okay. So our, for our first term, i equals one. So this whole, this, uh, this one minus i is gonna drop out and it's just gonna be 52, okay? plus zero, okay? And then for our next term, we're gonna multiply that by 52 plus one minus i is gonna be one minus two, which is negative one, so we'll do 52 minus one. And then the next term is gonna be 52, I haven't left myself much room, minus two, and then times 52, minus three. So we're incrementing the amount that we're removing from the 52. So that this now becomes, this here then becomes a nice short way, or not, it's still not a shorter way, but it becomes a way of, of writing all of this, okay? But now let's say we wanna generalize it. Now let's write the full 52 choose K, sorry, 52 choose four in this pi notation. So we'll cut our capital pi and from I equals one, two, four, because we really only want four terms and that's going to equal, that's going to be a ratio of up here, we need the first four terms of, of this 52 times 51 times 50 times four, okay? And as you recall, that's going to be 52 plus one minus I, all right? And then our next, our the bottom of this is just going to be I. Okay, so that means that our first term is going to be, okay, our first term is going to be 52 all over one. And our next term is going to be 51 all over two. You recall why this is, this is decreasing because we're increasing what we subtract from the 52. The next term is going to be that, and then the final term of the four is going to be 49 over four. So it separates it, but we have the same number of terms as we have the number that we're choosing from, okay? So here we have, we've got an alternate way of writing 52 choose K. Now again, I mean, this is shorter than writing out 
writing out all this uh, with the pi notation, okay? But the pi notation defines this. Okay? So it's an alternate way of writing the definition. So again, we'll finish this up with, uh, with generalizing this, because what do we have here? I mean, that was our N, okay? And this was our K. So it's gonna end up looking like this. So we'll finish that off. Finally, for your consumption, we'll summarize all of this. N choose K, do a lovely blue, because we're summarizing something. Okay, it has two definitions, two ways of defining it, all right? Um, one way we could define that is N, I'll spell it all out here, N factorial over K factorial all over N minus K factorial, okay? Which this N, uh, N factorial over N minus K factorial, also it simplifies to this. We could also write that as that, okay? Much more succinct. And then there's a there's a product notation where we've got i equals one to k of of n plus one minus i all over i which is exactly what we've, we, what we've got over here. Uh, just, I've just rewritten it to summarize what we've done. Uh, I've also, I have not put in the, the parentheses uh, that uh, I did previously. I'll do it up here in the example because, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's just added. It's really added. We don't need to separate them. I just did that to clarify what we were doing. Uh, so there you go. Love it. Uh, I maybe deserves a square around it too, eh? or a rectangle, whatever this is, something to make it look important. Ah, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you, see you next time. Uh, we're very close to uh, defining, well, we'll be defining the binomial, uh, binomial theorem and proving that in the next couple of next couple of videos uh we're getting there okay bye